Makur means blind in my language. I had really forgotten what it was like to actually hear perfectly. When I go home, I don't have a disability. When I go away from home, I have a disability, because that's what people choose to see. These are the stories about Native people facing life's challenges, meeting obstacles that would overwhelm most people. But to those labeled with disabilities, their obstacles became inspirational, their strengths and determination became gifts to offer. Disabled people have, have a particular role to play in, in our communities and I think that we can't in, in any process that we engage in with government, we can't forget about the disabled, we can't forget about the elderly and we can't forget about the very young. A third of our people suffer from disability and that is an astounding figure. Where we need to help push with governments or other people to make to make their world um, that much easier. Their world and our world, because they're part of who we are. They're part of our community. Um, they make up, uh, they, are, they are us. <laughs> There's a multitude of problems that disabled people have that non-disabled people never think of. It never enters their mind that these are problems. And I've talked to various agencies and we're now starting to get change, have major changes are starting to happen within the training and, and labor market. In our effort to capture their stories, we visited Victoria, BC at the annual general meeting of the BC Aboriginal Network on Disabilities. BCANS is an advocacy organization promoting the betterment of Aboriginal people with disabilities. One of the unique programs piloted by BCANS was known as the HALO Project. Some of the people we interviewed were graduates of that program and have successfully re-entered the labor force or have pursued higher education or even new careers. Bernadette, our receptionist who works for us now and has for the last about three years, I think, I'm not quite sure, I may be wrong, but I think it's about three years, I had never had a job in her life and a, in a fact, it thought she'd never, never ever have a job. And by chance, she met one of our employees and was asked to come down and try out for the job. And from that day to this, she's been nothing but a success. When I was a young teenager, I had gotten struck by a car and they told my parents all kinds of bad news that through this operation, they could lose me. They told my parents I would never be able to walk again, and I walk. I grew up pretty much most of my life with my mother in a wheelchair due to osteoarthritis. And she was an incredible role model. She had, she wasn't able to walk pretty much since I was two and on. And she managed to raise three children. And that was one thing that she had always said, always be grateful that there's always going to be something there that you have that nobody else has and maybe wants. A lot of people tell me they don't realize my left eye is artificial. And sometimes people look at me like, what eye is artificial? And I have to tell them and I think, oh yeah, you're just being nice and saying you don't know. But pe people are serious when they say that to me and they don't know. I have my sight, I can still walk, I can use my hands for sign language. There's other issues and other concerns in my life that I want to take care of 
in order to be preoccupied with the fact that, oh no, I may have just heard my last sound, big deal. Still alive. I listen to my boots when I'm walking, and I can tell when I'm, when, when, like if I'm walking by a wall and then there's a, there's a doorway, say it's an open doorway, I, I can hear it, I can hear the echo. And then, um, in some places I can feel how, how high a ceiling is. But I haven't been able to, to feel the uh, metal signposts in the middle of the sidewalks yet, I still bump into them. I struggled when I first learned to walk. When I was walking up and down those stairs, that's what they used to make me do. And I used to be scared. And when I was walking up and down those stairs, I thought about that thinking. <laughs> and they said I wouldn't walk. Look at these stairs. <laughs> and I thought, well, they said when I wouldn't walk, I wouldn't have children. And I did both. Downstairs is fully accessible to wheelchair, wheel, wheelchair accessible. We have a wheelchair accessible washroom. Right now we're working for hearing impaired because our, our reception is hearing impaired. Um, and uh, also finding out what ways we can, we can serve people with um, disabilities. A lot of um, a lot of our Brahm people, especially in the V6A postal code area, um, is the area that we would like to service. Uh, most of them are below subsistence level, you know, and poverty level. Uh, this is the reason for bring, putting this center where it is. You know, um, uh, we're very close to the uh, downtown east side area. Make it accessible to those those clients, um, the clients most in need people that are falling through the cracks. HALO it was the heighten, heightening awareness leading to opportunity program for Aboriginal people with disabilities, a variety of people with disabilities. Uh, it was uh, offered as a pre-employment, um, employment work experience, or uh, as a bridging program for Aboriginal people with disabilities to get into further education or training or even work. When instructors called me lazy and and stupid and um, et cetera, et cetera, I knew I wasn't. I knew that um, I knew I wasn't stupid. I was um, 23 or 24 before I found out that I had learning disabilities. Do I see myself as disabled? No. The only time I have to think about cerebral palsy is if I go to a healthcare professional such as a physiotherapist or a doctor who actually uh, gets me focusing on cerebral palsy. So I don't, I don't think about it unless I am forced to look at it. The HALO project was great. When I first started school, I didn't have any self-esteem at all. I basically was in because they were funding me. They're, I didn't think I'd make it. It was just kind of, oh, well, I'm here. Um, and that's what the HALO program gave me, is self-esteem. I think the greatest thing that we've seen that came out of the program was uh, people's lives were really um, transformed. They um, found themselves, um, the butterfly or the flower within them bloomed. I think I get strengths from inside. Um, I think it started with the HALO program, somebody else believing in me, not just my wishy-washy, I think I believe in myself kind of thing. Um, now I do, and I think that that's, I guess, where I get my strength from. <laughs> um, just believing now that I can succeed, I can make it through college and eventually get a degree. I was born with a condition called retinitis pigmentosa, which is just what it says. It's a pigment that grows through the retina. And uh, the pigment stops the light from, from uh, hitting 
you know, the rods, cones, and nerve, and whatnot. But um, I wasn't aware that I had any kind of peripheral vision loss until I was a teenager. One of the disadvantages that I have is that my eyes look so normal. So when people look at my eyes, they, because they look so normal, they don't immediately realize that I have a visual impairment. You always get typed as that disabled person when I go in for job interviews or anything like that, and they're like, well, I don't know if you'd be able to handle the workload or I don't know if you physically can do this. And I honestly say, well, you will never know till you give me the opportunity. What gave full employment might mean to a non-disabled people person can mean altogether a different thing to a disabled person. If you've been all your life and never worked, never been able to do anything, and been looked down by everybody, by your peers, by anybody, by your own family in some instances, and all of a sudden you begin to realize, hey, I can go out if, even if you're, say, volunteering at a bingo game or working as a volunteer somewhere. That to that person is gainful employment. And there's a, a mother and daughter walking right beside me, a little girl, you know, four or five years old at that question period. And she's like, oh, mommy, look, that guy's in a wheelchair. What's wrong with him? And, you know, I, if they came up and asked me, I would have been happy to tell them. But the mother was like, no, don't look or don't listen and quickly walked away. And that was definitely that I was, you know, stayed in my mind. And that's why I'm happy to go out to communities and schools and tell my story. I'd rather have people come up and ask and learn about what what happened to me or what can happen. And so I'm out there to, you know, promote um, disabled people and then also um, injury prevention. Now I, I can uh, see see a lot of hope. You know, I can I can see that there's a lot of potential for healing. And uh, I, I've recently uh, started back in school and, and I'm now uh, studying psychology. And I know that um, while I'm studying and when I'm finished studying that, that I can uh, do a lot of good work for Native people, especially residential school survivors. I couldn't get out of my place and peek out the windows <laughs> you know, see if anybody's going by. If somebody was, I'd stay inside, you know, days and days. <laughs> I wouldn't go anywhere. I've been in about, I think it's 26 recorded car accidents. And I went to the doctors and they told me I have arthritis. It's got psoriatic arthritis and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And on top of that, to make it worse, I, got, I have asthma. I spent a lot of time by myself. You know, and I'd head out to crowds though, big crowds, big crowds. I try to make myself make myself be more open, try to talk. And then when I would open my mouth, nothing would come out. Heart would start pounding. I'd almost drop. Sometimes I would. Sometimes I'd faint. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> I walked in the class and that was um, the Halo program. So I said, to him, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big class and there's people like way over there and I'm going to have to talk to them and I'm going to have to say stuff. <laughs> My hands were just, uh, just all gibbled up like they couldn't move, they couldn't do anything. Their fingers were crossing each other and stuff like that. And So I went to a sweat lodge and even though I should be able to run one myself, I, eh, I can't be my own doctor. Don't be afraid to um, to find to find it. You know, don't give up on, on looking for that help. You know, if I if I had given up before, you know, I, I wouldn't have found the the Halo program. You know, and I think that's well. There was a couple of times where I did, where I did give up, and that's that's when I look back. That's a time when I was locking myself in, in, in my apartment, you know, behind the curtains and not talking to anyone. I'd shove my kids out the door 
and tell them, you know, don't be like mom, you know. And like a, a lot of times I can't tie my shoes. Sometimes I can't get dressed. Trying to say, okay, there's a way out of here. There's a way out of this mess somehow. And just being really hopeful that there is a way out. Just hoping that somehow, you know, it'll just go away. And like sometimes I get so upset, like I can't sit down, I can't stand up, and I can't lay down. So what I do is, I, well, it doesn't matter anymore. So what I do is, might as well carp. It's going to hurt whether I do or not, eh? I found my voice and now I can throw it off the mountain. <laughs> I don't really consider myself disabled. Because I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I missed it. Because I know that if um, I behave like there's something that I need to hide, or like there's some shame involved in this, that would be bad. I know that people with disabilities face a lot of frustrations, that it's hard, and I face that as well. Now people sometimes look at me funny because I'm deaf. You've heard that phrase, deaf and dumb. They think perhaps I can't read or write or do other things that people who have normal hearing can do. However, deaf people don't consider themselves disabled. That's not an identification they choose. I, it's just a hearing loss, that's all it is. It's not a disability, it's not something that destroys my life. It's just that I don't hear. So I don't consider myself as part of the disabled community and I don't consider myself involved with disabilities as such. You shouldn't let anything ever stop you. You should always feel so you can go ahead with whatever you want to. If people tell you that you can't do it, you have to maintain a positive attitude. You have to consider that you can do whatever it takes. As we gain more control of, over our lives, as we gain more control over our territories, as we assert the authorities within our territories, I think there's a lot of room for optimism. I'm really afraid about going to university. I've got the highest education in my family already. That's good. <laughs> but well, there it's you not go. Good. There's an achievement in itself. Aboriginal people want to contribute their talents and skills in their communities. Their voices must be heard, that they have the abilities and not just disabilities. And it is up to society as a whole to open those gifts offered and to present them to all people. Don't be afraid to speak up because when you have a voice it empowers you. And when, uh, when you speak, um, People, people may, may listen, they may not listen readily right on the spot, but don't be afraid to continue speaking up and making sure that you understand that you have a voice. Because if they don't speak up, who's gonna know what, what's really needed? And a lot of people with disabilities may know that they have a voice, they may not know. And sometimes that's hidden behind a lot of different barriers. I can only speak for myself, I can't speak for other people. But I do understand that a lot of the barriers come from the past experiences of either rejection or feeling like a failure. Uh, you're never really a failure because you always learn something no matter what you're doing. As long as you take that, you're fine. You know? And try not to live up to the expectations of what you think people want you to become. Just be yourself. The um, tendency, I believe, for many people is to isolate themselves. And that, that's not good. Like, I still find myself forcing myself to leave the house because it's so comfortable in the house. I don't want to go out and be put in the danger of being run over by a car or walking into telephone poles and, and falling in ditches and whatnot. So it's easier for me to stay, stay inside at home, but, but that's not good. It's, it, you got to get out there. You got to, you got to make that social network because it's, it's so crucial. A lot of other people out there don't get that opportunity, are sometimes don't have the confidence enough to get out there and say, 
this is what I want. I still want to go to school or I still want to, you know, um, look, get out there and start looking for a job. Not a lot of people have that um, um, opportunity or encouragement and um, personal strength and growth for that. And we were hoping that Halo um, gave all those disabled people out there the opportunity to finish their education or even like work on their resume and hopefully get out there into the job force. My vision is uh, basically to keep on carving, to do the best I can to allow people to, to see, a, see the carvings, what I can do, and to live a good, really good life. They say, don't give up. People could be wrong, the doctors. They say things, I believe, that they don't want to tell your family that you're going to make it in case you don't. And my encur I encourage people to just listen to their heart and just know that they're going to pull through what it is they're going through their hard time. Yes, I am going to be able to achieve something remarkable with my life. I'm hoping that for myself that I can also project that with what's happening to me and the fact that I absolutely not only hope to achieve, I must achieve and I must be successful and healthy because there are a lot of people out there that can get easily down. Just everyday things start to get to you. You know, everybody's human, and everybody gets to feeling that um, maybe, you know, is it worth it? Of course it's worth it. <laughs>